Um, slash SRV is not on a lot of Linux systems. That's very distribution dependent, but SUSE uses that as an area uh, where it keeps um, oh, some of the directories associated with having a server, like all of your web pages, um, um, if you have the Apache web server installed. Um, Sys is a rather new directory um, that a lot of systems have that uh, is also a virtual directory like PROC, as I recall. I'm, I'm, I won't say too much more about that. Temp is a directory where that keeps temporary files that your uh, various applications need when they run. So. Yeah, well, and it fills up with time, and every now and then you want to just go in and clean that thing up because it does fill up with time. Um, USR is a funny directory. It's kind of a, it was invented way back in the early days of Unix, and it's kind of an overflow directory where they keep more of the bin directory, more of the um, user commands in it, more of the um, sysadmin commands in it, more libraries in it. Um, basically, it's got a lot of stuff that I think probably should have been up at the top level, but for historical reasons, it's not up at the top level. Um, so um, there's a lot of stuff kept in there. And, uh, and almost every Unix system has a slash USR. Slash var is um, an interesting area. It has a lot of the oh archived files that a system needs as it runs. Like, for example, mail will be kept there. So if you have a mail server, all the mail coming in and out of the system will go through the slash var directory. Slash var may ha uh, also will have the log files that your system keeps in um, just how well it's running. Unix and Linux has a tendency to keep log files on anything and everything. And uh, all of those log files are usually kept under slash var slash log. And I'm exaggerating because all of everything's never true in Linux or Unix. It, there's likely to be some log files someplace else as well, but nearly all of them are in that um, log area. Um, opt is another area where, well, it could be, um, um, there could be new software that's gotten loaded there, or it may be uh, files associated with the software that is running up in the opt area, um, in slash opt itself, up at the top level. Um, the, um, um, let's see, there was another one I was going to mention. Oh, um, slash spool, lots of stuff in slash spool. Uh, you will become familiar with slash spool, but uh, let's look at what's in there a little bit right now. Not much. Um, oh, there may be mail stuff in there. There's often printer stuff in here, including print files that have been reformatted or are being reformatted and um, haven't been actually printed yet. Somebody sent them to a printer, but they haven't gotten to the printer yet. Uh, files of that type. There's also jobs that are scheduled to be run, ran at some point in time, maybe in this area, under, under cron in particular. Um, some databases will keep their major database files in this area, like PostFix or MySQL. Um, and, and a lot more. OK. Now let's go back to our thing here and see where we're at. Well, the other thing I want to emphasize in Linux, everything is a file in Linux. Linux 
came out in the day and age when we had disk drives and it was designed because we had disk drives. And so they had the concept that we'll just make everything a file. Even if it's not a file, if it's a terminal, we'll make it a file. If it's a USB port, we'll pretend it's a file. If it's a disk drive, we'll pretend it's a file. So if you go up into this area under slash DEV, this is where we have a lot of files. And um, but this area has what are called special files. And whoop, that wasn't very good typing, was it? There. And the special files are actually um, the files associated with devices. Like this file here, that's your CPU. Um, and there is a file that kind of represents the CPU. Um, there's files that represent the disk drives. Um, let's find some interesting files here. Um, let's see. There's a file called null. This is kind of an interesting file. It's the nothing file. And um, you can, if you want to get rid of some output, you've got a lot of output coming to the screen, just copy it to slash dev slash null, and it goes out into the thin air, or actually into the vacuum hidden in you, deep in the bowels of your computer. Um, whatever. Um, this is your first disk drive. Uh, the book calls these HDAs. Nowadays, most of us are using SDs instead of HDs. The HDs used to be associated with um, uh, PADA, uh, parallel ATA disk drives. Today, we're all using SCSI style disk drives, uh, SATA or uh, USB disk drives. And actually, some of the operating, some of the uh, versions of Linux even have started calling the PADA drives S, um, SDA. I know SUSE does, or at least I, I believe it does. Um, and um, so this file here is your first disk drive. This file would be the first partition on the first disk drive. That file would be the second partition on the first disk drive. This would be uh, SDB would be your second disk drive. SDB1 would be the um, um, second partition, or a first partition on the second disk drive, and so on. Um, TTY, these are your terminal consoles. Um, um, the, the consoles, the control alt F1, control alt F2, all of those guys are associated with um, the TTYs here. And if you had old fashioned ASCII terminals, well, they'd be represented down here as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's far, that's enough detail. Um, I, um, USB, um, yeah. Oh, these devices are video devices. Are uh, well, actually, here's a video zero. Um, things like cameras, video devices, um, uh, sound cards. Um, the whole works is represented in there. Okay, in some fashion, and. Because those are files, you can often do things like they're just copying data to those or reading data from those with something like a copy command or or usually a more elaborate copy command, but essentially a copy command. We have a command called OD that we use a good deal for that sort of thing. Uh, OK. Um, I think we've gone through most of the stuff there. The next thing that the book discusses is um, is um, um, I'm sorry, editors. 
uh, text editors because we need text editors if we're going to write scripts. We need text editors in order to be able to modify configuration files. Um, Unix sysadmins need text editors all the time. And um, I guess um, the two text editors most commonly used, one is VI. Everybody should know some VI commands because VI is on almost every Unix or Linux system. Um, the other one, uh, and then everybody has their favorite text editor that maybe is a little easier to use than VI. Although VI is very powerful, a lot of my friends who are professional programmers live and die by VI and they swear by VI. The other half of the professional programmers, by and large, live and die and swear by Emacs. Um, I am in the Emacs camp myself. I really do like Emacs. Um, but it's a probably only on about half of all uh, Unix machines or Linux machines. Um, and and uh, you won't find it on all of them. So it's nice to know a little bit of VI so you can get by on a machine that does not have Emacs or does not have, you know, some people like Kate or Joe or Pico or um, I don't know. There's a lot of editors. And people like different editors. And um, But by and large, most of those are not on every Linux machine or every Unix machine. Um, VI will be. And Emacs will be on a lot of them. Um, but um, VI is ex described in the textbook. And I think I'll leave it at that to read the textbook on VI. I will leave one caveat, though. Uh, the textbook gives you lots and lots and lots of VI commands. The truth is you don't need to know that many to be able to get by with VI. Probably five, ten commands is all I know, and I get by just fine with VI. No, I could not write, you know, I mean, I. I couldn't live with VI and nothing else. But if what I have to do is pretty simple, VI works just fine. And I know enough VI. And I, it, I don't need to know that much VI to, to be able to um, use it quite well. Um, and then I know. And then Emacs is what I use mostly. And I will try to do a separate video on Emacs. So bye-bye. Um,